Hello everyone. Thanks for joining me in the De Youngsters studio for this week's guided art activity. My name is Hannah and I'm a senior teaching artist at the Fine Arts Museums in San Francisco. Today's object is inspired by the sculpture garden at the De Young. I bet most of you know what a sculpture is. It's art that has shape and form, so it's not flat like a drawing. I wonder if any of you have been to the sculpture garden at the De Young. It's one of my favourite places at the museum. There's interesting art to look at and you're in a beautiful outside space. Let me show you what we're going to be making. I'll move it around so you can see a bit better. You're going to get to make some of your own sculptures but we're also going to make a little place for you to display them. This is called a diorama, where you make a setting or a scene to show objects in. Have you ever made a diorama before? Maybe. I've chosen to make a garden to display my sculptures, but you don't have to. You can make whatever you want to display yours. We're going to make the diorama first, and then we'll make the sculptures. We're going to take a closer look at some of the sculptures in the de Young's collection later on too. I'm going to move these out of the way and then I'm going to show you some of the materials we're going to be using. To start with, you'll need a 12 inch by 12 inch square of kind of thick paper. If you don't have anything like this, you could always try using a grocery bag instead and I'll show you how to make both. You're going to need some materials to decorate your diorama. I've gathered up lots of different kinds of papers. There's some tissue papers here that I think I had a, a gift that came in these. I like to collect papers like that. I'm wondering if you collect things too. I've torn out some pictures from magazines. I've printed off some pictures from the internet. Does this look familiar to anyone? Yeah, that's the de Young building, the copper building. So anything that you can kind of find that you could stick down could be used to decorate your diorama. Then you're also going to need some, what I like to call bits and bobs, just objects that you can find. You might find a lot of these in your recycling bin. I've got some cardboard tubes, some bottle caps, some corks, some yarn, string, foil, anything, anything that's kind of laying around. You don't need special art supplies for this project. And then you're going to need some sort of general things that are going to help you. So some scissors will be handy, a ruler and a pencil. You might want to use those too. You'll need some glue and some tape. We're going to be talking about what glue works best with what materials a bit later on. And then I'm not going to be using these today, but you might want to have them as an option. Colouring pencils and markers, because you might want to draw on some details as well. Okay, so let's begin with the diorama. You're going to fold the edges together as best you can. And then flatten it out and turn it and fold the other edges together. So you've basically made four squares in your paper. And then with some scissors, just cut along one of those fold lines just to the center. And this is the clever bit. You just lift up the two squares either side of the cut and fold them into your diorama. I'm not going to stick it just yet. I think it's going to be easier. I find it easier to decorate when it's flat. If you don't have this 12 inch square thick paper, I'll show you how you can use a grocery bag. With a ruler, go ahead and measure the width of the base. This is about seven inches. And you're going to mark a line of seven inches along the length of the base. And I've marked that out with a flat line so you can see. I like to then fold this flat down and measure from this edge as well, seven inches. 
and then you're going to cut that out. I'm basically cutting a, the corner out of the square of the bag. Once you've done that, you can open it up and then you're going to just cut down one of these fold lines. And that extra flap, you can just keep and tuck in. You might want to stick that down to make it a bit more sturdy. Okay, now we get to decorate the diorama. I've already stuck one picture down. I'm going to hold that up so you can see. I found this in a magazine and it's a picture of a woman walking her dog in the park. And then I thought on this other wall I would perhaps try and create some texture with some paper. I've started to fold this paper. Can you see? Do you recognize this print again? This is a photo taken outside the de Young Museum. I'm going to make one more little fold and then I'm going to stick it down. So I'm making a little fold like that and tucking it down. And now I'm going to glue it on. I'm going to use some white glue and I'm just going to put this mat, my glue mat, under so that I don't get glue on the table. So I'm going to get some white glue on my brush and I'm going to glue the edges like that. And put just a little bit of glue in the middle. I'm not going to put glue everywhere. Move it off to the side. Now I'm going to carefully, carefully stick down that first corner and line up that bottom edge. I'm going to do my best to line it up here as well. And I'm just going to kind of gently press down, but not all of the pieces because I don't want it to be stuck flat. I want there still to be some of that texture. I'm wondering if you can come up with some other ways of creating texture. Maybe you could crumple the paper and kind of flatten it out and stick it on like that. Now I need to trim. I've turned it to the other side so I can see a bit better. paper, some green construction paper cut to the right size, but I thought it looked a little bit plain. So I've got some other colours too, which I've cut into different shapes. And I've started to stick, let me bring my mat again. And now I thought I might arrange some more pieces. You can layer and move them around. Maybe I'll try, maybe I'll try this one. Yeah, and I'm gonna use my glue stick for this. So this time I'm gonna move the paper that I'm sticking and put glue on the area. And then this is my last piece to stick down. that is finished. I'm going to put a few dabs of glue on the back so that I can stick it on the base of my diorama, the floor of my diorama. And that is pretty much finished. I'm going to show you how I like to stick the base. I'm going to use some tape, just some masking tape, and tear off a little bit and I'm going to make it into a loop like that. And I'm just going to tuck that under there and stick that down so that it's ready for the sculptures. I'll move that off to the side. Now when I was making some sculptures earlier, I was sort of thinking about what I wanted to make. I don't want to copy the sculptures that are in the sculpture garden, but I was inspired by the shapes and the materials and the textures and the sizes of the sculptures. 
So let's go ahead and look at Apple by Gustav and Ulla Kreitz, made in 2005. I'm wondering if you've seen these before. I had a lot of fun playing with my children running in between the apples. Maybe you've done that too. I thought that I could make a kind of a small roundish shape low to the ground like the apples. But there's another sculpture that I also am really inspired by the materials. It's called Artificial Rock and that was made by Zhan Wang also in 2005. Can you see how silvery and shiny it is? It's almost like a crumpled mirror and wherever you walk around it you can see different reflections moving. So I thought I would kind of try and use the shapes and the materials from those two sculptures to make a piece. Can you guess what material I'm going to use to finish this off? I've just used a sheet of magazine paper to make a kind of a roundish ball. And now I'm just going to wrap it in some foil. So it's kind of shiny and reflective, a bit like artificial rock. Now I thought I could add one more thing, maybe kind of bring in some colour. I've got one of these wire twisties, these twist ties, that I've never really used these. I thought I could perhaps incorporate it into my sculpture. Just make a couple of twists and there it's done. I'll just set that over there while I think about my next sculpture. Now the next sculpture I have planned I was inspired by the materials that I found. I have some lovely corrugated paper, some corrugated card. Have you ever used this before? It's got these lovely ridges on it. And when you bend it, you can kind of see them even more. And I thought I could cut it into a triangle and roll it up. And that way you get to see the ridges going up wherever you are around it. But you also get to follow this interesting line that's spiraling up. I'm not going to use any glue for this sculpture either. I'm going to use some string to tie it at the bottom. Now if you're going to use string to tie knots, you might want to have somebody else to help you hold it still. Because tying knots can be tricky sometimes. Let's see if I can do it all by myself. So I'm going to do the first knot and pull it a bit tight and then do the second knot to hold it steady. I'm going to trim off the ends of the string but I'm not going to go too close to the knot because I don't want it to come undone. So we now have two sculptures. I'm going to lay that flat while I think about the last one. I have some other materials that have kind of made me want to include them in my sculpture garden. I have these corks. I bet some of you know that cork is a special kind of tree bark, so it kind of seems like appropriate to put it in my sculpture garden. I've already stuck these three together. I'm wondering if you've ever tried to stick corks together or things like plastic bottle caps. It can be quite tricky and a bit frustrating. Glue sticks don't really work because they're not strong enough. White glue, it does work, but you have to use a lot of glue and you have to be very patient because you have to hold the objects together tightly until the glue is almost dry and that can take a really long time. I actually think using a hot glue gun is probably the best solution and I'll show you that in just a moment. But if you don't have a hot glue gun, we could always use that trick of making a loop of tape like we did earlier. And this will stick, probably not like long term, but it will stick for a little while. So let's try it. Let's put a little loop of tape on the bottom. And then let's put that on there like that. It's kind of holding it. But I am going to show you how to use a hot glue gun as well. If uh, you've ever used one of these, you know that they do get really hot and you have to be very careful not to get any of the glue on your skin because it, it can burn and hurt. 
Now I'm needing to decide where I'm going to put my cork. I could put it there like that or I'm wondering if I could maybe try something. Maybe I'll try that. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on here like that and hold it steady. I don't want my fingers to go anywhere near those sort of spidery silks that can trail behind the the glue gun and I'm just going to hold it still for a few seconds until it sticks. There we go. Now we're kind of getting ready to stick them in our diorama. I'm wondering if you're starting to get some ideas for what sculptures you want to make or do you think you might wait and see what materials you can find see if you'll be inspired by them. I wonder what you'll do with your diorama when you've finished it, how you'll display it. Maybe you could take a picture and send it to your friends to show them what you've been doing. Maybe you could take your family on like a little tour of your sculpture garden and explain what materials you used and how you made them. Don't forget, we'd love to see what you've made too. So you can tag us on any social platform using hashtag to youngsters, or you can DM us as well. Well, thank you so much for joining me. And remember, there's a new guided art activity every Friday.